Hey everyone, I'm back from my break, but I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a heads up before I start this video. So for the earlier part of it, I filmed it before my break. The rest of it, I filmed after my break and I got sick during my break and you can kind of still hear it now. So I'm a little bit nasally and a little bit iffy during this review, but I hope it won't bother you too much. But I'm back now and I'll be able to start making content as soon as I can. And I have to do a live stream because I need to update everyone on what's going on. But without further ado, let's get into this one. Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another installment in the iWish series, a series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various sites around the web just to see if they're any good, and honestly, sometimes we've got some good dealios and most of the time they've been pretty terrible, but I like to buy this stuff so you don't have to. However, what I'm about to show you today, I'm not even terribly sure what I'm actually reviewing. You've seen the picture in the thumbnail. We're basically on the same page. I really don't know what this thing is capable of doing. Apart from playing some Famicom games and working and acting as a screen, everything else is kind of a bit of a mystery to me. But this item is sold by the same folks who sell the calculator thing that I recently reviewed, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll cut it up there if you want to take a look at it. That product was super janky, but this item was funded by you folks on a previous stream that I did a couple of weeks ago, so thank you very much to the folks displayed on screen. I really do appreciate it, and I hope I can deliver an in-depth look at this product thing, whatever it is. And also, since there's not many of you on the donation list, I can say all of your names this time around. So I'll do that at the end of the video, so stick around for that. I'd like to mention all the people that do donate on all the other live streams, but there's like three big lists of it, and I'd be here forever trying to pronounce everyone's name, and I'd be butchering it along the way. So when it's just a minimal amount, I can say them. Plus, these are usual people that donate anyway, so thank you very much to everyone, once again, displayed on screen, for donating your hard-earned money towards seeing strange, weird, and obscure products on this channel. But before I I get started i'll just let you all know usual timestamps are in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip to wherever you need to be this video is going to be all over the place because i'm just going to go into this with an open mind and have no idea what to expect so if you feel that the video is slowing down for you or you just don't want to listen to me ramble feel free to skip along that is no problems at all so the item today that we're taking a look at is the retro 3.5 inch crt computer model handheld game console built in 180 games with mic speaker tv box video play 3.5 millimeter audio output and currently it's 111 dollars and 73 cents Australian, so just make it $112 Australian with free shipping. So I'll display a rough currency conversion chart on screen to give you a kind of estimate on how much this would cost in some other countries. For $112 for this thing, it's basically a novelty. That's all I can say at this point. Also, it says Nintendo on the front, but then later in the pictures, it shows Windows XP replaced with that. So I don't know which one I've got. This is a retro PC style media thing. As I said, I don't know terribly much about it. The long list of instructions, well, start Starting with the specifications, so the keyboard on this is non-functional, but if you flip it over, it's actually the, well, it's the handle of the game console. The display size is 87 by 87 by 130 millimeters, so a 3.5 inch display on this. The weight of the whole set is 1.5 kilograms. We've got a microphone that's noise reduction, a wired speaker. The function is cable connected TV box can watch TV and listen to music. Connection description of various interfaces. Now, I will leave a link to this in the description below if you want to take a look at it. There's a picture of all the cables that go into this thing. And right here it says, be sure to follow the instructions and connection instructions with three exclamation marks. So I will absolutely do that because interface one is mouse, interface two is keyboard, interface three is signal, interface four is microphone, interface five is power, interface six is signal, and interface seven is speaker output. We're all good with that. Now the product does not come with a power adapter. Please use the DC five volt, one amp to two amp charging head. Note DC nine volt, 12 volt, and high power fast charger are not allowed. Now I kind of learned my lesson from the calculator. I'm not gonna use a high powered charger. I'm gonna use a 10 watt Apple USB power adapter, which delivers 5 volt at 2.1 amps, which should be absolutely perfect for this thing. As I said, don't want to repeat the same mistake I did with the calculator. The next thing that I'm going to show you is the proper instructions of this thing. All of the things that we need to follow with this thing. I've said thing too many times. I'll display it all on screen right now. When connecting a small computer to a household TV karaoke song, you need to turn on the microphone function in the menu, then enter the video to play a company, a company, accompaniment, what? Accompaniment song, accompaniment, accom what? Accompaniment songs. Reduce the volume of the small computer to a minimum and increase the volume of the household TV to compensate for the volume of the microphone. The higher the volume of the household TV, the higher volume of the microphone. The next one is a bit strange, but the speaker and microphone base have reserved space for counterweights. It is only necessary 
to remove the screws on the base plate. After the counterweights are placed, they become stable. The counterweights are made of lead blocks, sandbags, etc. I don't know if they're actually in the box or not, but we'll see. No expansion card is supported. Baidu has introduced the expansion card. If the original 8GB memory card is purchased, the card contains the product manual and XNO video converter software, which can convert video files in other formats to the file format used by the small computer, one key conversion, no installation required. I am just completely confused by this. I'm going to absolutely follow this. And with that long introduction out of the way, we have a box. And I don't think this is 1.5 kilograms. Now we turn to small's the scale of... Uh, oh, the scale's called a salter. I didn't know that. Salter scale. Switch you on. How much do you weigh, buddy? 618 grams. If you can kind of see it down there. No? Hang on, let me do it. Oh, there we go. 614 grams it comes to. Sorry for the jump cut. I had a bit of an unfortunate mishap. So I unboxed this thing and had a look at it and stuff and was ready to plug it in and power it up. And I accidentally unplugged my power cable that goes to my camera. I used to use batteries for my camera, but I have it connected to power all the time because I was sick of changing batteries and this can just keep recording. And yeah, I accidentally unplugged it and that was it. I'm using a Lumix camera. I got a MDT file. I used a free software to convert it and I only got back from the start of the video to where I was ready to unbox it. So I'm very very sorry that I'm not going to be able to show you the unboxing but we can just jump straight into it and I can just show you everything that I got with uh, with this. Let's kind of ignore that for now because they've given me instructions but the instructions are exactly what was on the listing so I don't really need to pay attention to these because I've got them on my computer and I kind of understand what's going on sort of. They also gave me a charger, which is an Oppo charger, and it's actually fairly dirty, but to be fair, the seller did message me and say, do you want a charger with this? And I didn't get back to them. I completely forgot about it. And then when I went back to my messages and seen it, I just said, oh, actually, no, sorry, I don't need it. And they say, oh, we've already packed it for you. So thank you to them, but I'm not gonna use it because it's a US one. We also get a 3.5 mil to two RCA converter. Then we get this cool little thing. I pulled it out of the box originally and said, oh my God, they've given me a passport. Uh, it's not, uh, it's the games and stuff on here, but uh, it tells you, yeah, all the games that are built onto this, and there's also some stuff on the back here, which I don't know what that says, and that's where the Android translator pen would have came in handy to go bzz, 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 and then tell me what that is, but uh, we'll, we'll just pretend it says, have fun gaming and don't kill this janky product, because um, be careful, uh, I'll listen to that. But the unit itself is very, very interesting. Look at all of the, <laughs> look at the mess of cables at the back. So it's the FC, FC, FCE101, 10 watt, DC 5 volt, Chinese, and 2000 milliamps. So I don't know if it has a battery in it or not, I'm not too sure. But this thing definitely does not weigh 1.5 kilograms because the speaker and the microphone are very, very lightweight. But let's kind of try and work out what's going on with this. So you have a 3.5 mil cable going to the top of the unit, to the bottom of the unit, so that connects that together. Then we have this cable from the screen, which is a little speaker and it's a Adorable. It's a tiny little speaker with QH01 and a warranty sticker. You'll see plenty of these warranty stickers around. And there's also a little sticker to then stick it to wherever you want to stick it. That's a lot of stickers. And then we have two mini USB cables. One is for the mouse, which looks a little something like this. And this mouse is not actually a mouse. It is just for the volume buttons. Very, very clicky buttons though. Then we have the controller, which actually has Nintendo written on it. So um, Nintendo, don't come after me. Uh, it's not my fault that this was on here. This keyboard is all plastic, doesn't work, doesn't do anything, serves no purpose other than to look cool. But then you switch it over and there's the controls there for the Famicom games. And it's very, very, very mushy. Look at the travel. <laughs> on there. It's safe to say it's the most sophisticated Famiclone I've ever seen, but you get that with it, which looks interesting. Then you get another 3.5 mil cable that goes to the tiny microphone on this. It's a little adorable microphone. And then we have a micro USB cable that's really, really short. And that was what I was trying to connect up. I needed to disconnect this and connect in one that was a little bit longer. The monitor is attached to the base and can't be moved. I thought it, you may have been able to adjust it, but it's got this piece there holding it in. Very CRT looking and retro PC style based. And then on the front of it is where you have the 3.5 inch LCD. Sad it's not a CRT that they've put in this. That would have been extremely cool if there was a mini CRT in this because I would have literally connected like a PS2 up to this and played games on there. But I could still connect a PS2 up to this 
because it has video input. We'll see how we go. We've got a Windows XP badge right there. So it's the Nintendo Windows XP. That's fair. Now there is the micro SD card that is included in this, and this is an eight gigabyte one. I will probably make a backup of this because if anything happens to that card, this thing's not gonna work anymore. So I have to be careful. Then we also have the plus button, minus button that do multiple things and the escape button. None of the buttons on the monitor actually work or function. They're just there for decoration, but it is a very outstanding looking unit though. On the bottom, we do have more warranty stickers. Everything has a warranty sticker on it by the way it was put together on the 6th of the 9th 2023 or something not too sure but it's probably a lot of reused parts in this made into this cool shell so all of these were connected up when i got these out of the box as long as i remember where everything goes then i shouldn't have any issues let's put that there that'll stay right about there good stuff all right keyboard microphone oh my god there's just cables everywhere plug in my micro usb cable i can now go ahead and try out this thing. I forgot how to power it on. Long press plus to turn on the display. There it is. Okay, so that's the display on this. So it's looking a little something like that. So I'd say that's saying no signal, possibly. That's to increase the brightness or sound. Okay, so they know worky. So this is to open the Famicom. Uh, yes you are. Okay, this is, uh, this is looking good. I may potentially have to set this up another way because I, I can't see what's on the display. Let me set this up properly and we'll continue on, okay? This is kind of not really effective, but I just wanted to show you the display. It's bad. It's really, really bad. It's hard to tell, but it's really grainy and there's like a whole bunch of lines going through it. There's a line going through the center of it. That is a super low quality display right there. That's the brightness, okay. So I'll leave it at probably 75%. There we go. It's my own custom one now. Perfect. Let's start with videos first. Oh, I need to turn the volume up. I've turned the volume up with the mouse. That's so cool. So the first thing we have is videos. And, oh, okay. Uh, can, you, can you read these? Because I can't read these. There's no sound, but there's Chinese stuff going on. Um, it's a, oh, it's actually a film. Well, or well, something. There is sound happening, but it's very soft. Oh, there's Peppa Pig. That's, that's reasonable. Uh, oh, that, that, uh, Doramon. I think Doramon? Some animated cartoon thing? Dragon Ball? No, that's clearly not Dragon Ball, is it? It could be. Okay, is it gonna finish? Oh, oh, yep, it, it's something. Two. Sunrise. Yesterday. It's got subtitles. Um, some sort of a game there, fair, uh, then another Chinese show, there's, uh, 10 movie files on here, how does one exit this then? Okay, I've exited, let's go to Famicom, oh, okay, this is the Famicom stuff, why is everything called KKK? Let's try the first one then, oh, it's, <laughs> what am I playing, is a tooth? Where's the sound? It's absolutely as high as it can go. Oh, hello, this is a ROM hack for sure. Or is it an original game? It looks less graphically detailed than Super Mario Brothers. Now, how does one exit this? Would escape work? That would work, s'mores. I think the speaker's broken. I think the big spurk is broken on this. I believe I have the exact same speaker in a different shell. So this is an Electrica speaker that I actually got from Daiso uh, when I was in Japan in 2015 and I've never used it. It's literally sat in the garage and gathered dust and now it's the perfect time to use this. But I reckon, oh, the speakers might be almost the same size. They look very close, because if I could put that in there, we could do some mad hacks. But let me just see if this works so we can get some sound on this. So we can actually hear what the soundtracks of these games sound like. Nope, no sound for this. Okay, this is what's happening, just connecting the speaker in. Okay, that's probably the best I've got out of this speaker. Oh, I got it. It's super janky. That's all it is. It's just super janky. Perfect. Now we have audio. That only took me like 20 minutes to figure out, but that's okay. I'll go back to videos and I'll just play. It's all in Chinese, but um, I'll definitely have to load my own video file on this, um, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Cause I just want to generally test this to make sure that everything works before I start sort of doing my own custom things. All right, so going back to our KKK games, I just said that, didn't I? Let's see what this sounds like. 
Um, cool ROM hack. You're a you're a tooth that becomes a furball, unless you're. A Okay, it's definitely a Super Mario ROM hack. It's funny that the first encounter, you have this. You can't even get past this because there's a block in the way. <laughs> it's like the lost levels right here. I like the walking animation too. That's really good. So if I go like this, where is it? Where's the block? There it is. Okay. And then we've got to get up there and off we go. We've made it past the first obstacle. I hate this game. Disco Taito? Ah, okay. There was a games list, but um, I've completely forgotten what it was. Ah, you're a happy chap with a baseball cap that just got hit with a bunch of fruit. I'm confused and don't know what's going on. Ah, it's uh, Chef Mike on an umbrella. Wow. Uh, oh, yes, yes, Chef. But what is he? What? He's just throwing his head, just like, what? Well, supposedly this supports NES games, so hopefully I could put my own custom ones on here, and perhaps that'd be good. Ripley's in here because she's wondering what's going on. I don't know. I'm watching uh, chickens, headless chickens, uncooked chickens walk around. I guess, I guess they're chickens. What are they? What are they things? What are those things? Um, I, I, I'm... Yep, I'm scared of this thing. I'm gonna go onto the games list real quickly. Oh yeah, in the listing they all say KKK. I didn't even realize that. They don't seem to repeat, and there's 180 of them. 175 is supposedly Super Mario. Let's try 175. Um, I could definitely say that the controls are very much uh, not the best, but they'll do. 175 is actually 94. Hang on, wait, what? So 85 should be 175, which is Super Mario. Okay, I've worked things out. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's see how Super Mario Bros. runs. Is this different? Yeah, this is this is the Lost Levels, isn't it? Or is it another ROM hack? It's a little laggy. And I can say, yeah, the controls, once again. I, I didn't realize the springs there. Uh, the controls are just not uh, the best with this. Mario 3's on here, supposedly. That's number eight, so we have to go and find eight. We're not looking at the numbers on the left, we're looking at the numbers on the right. Does that, no, that doesn't make any sense at all. 159, which is eight, should be Super Mario Brothers. Yes, it is. Oh, that didn't sound healthy. Oh, that doesn't sound healthy at all. Okay, it's slightly demonic, Super Mario Brothers 3. But it's Super Mario Bros. 3, regardless. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's playable. But so far, at the moment, it's a uh, $113 Famiclone. I'd have to take a look at the micro SD card to see if all of these are actually on there. And then what I can do is dump these, and then you can go through them and play them. Because I don't want to show every single one of these. It's probably better if you go through them and see if there's any funny ones. But actually, let me just quickly try Super Flying Bird, because I think that'll be a Flappy Bird clone. Let's see if I'm correct. Oh, yep. That's correct. It's Super Flappy Bird. All right, let's... Whee! Okay, where's the pipe? Uh, did I break it? Did I win? Oh, that's Turbo. Oh, okay, you've got to drop right down to the bottom of the screen to continue on. So, okay. This looks difficult. Yeah, okay, F forget this, forget it. Uh, yeah, so I'll see if I can dump them and you folks can go through them and see what you can find. But we'll keep checking because we've got karaoke up next. Oh. Hello, this is karaoke function. See, um, I'm talking and it's outputting through the speaker. So that that's, that's really cool. I'll do a proper sound test with this and see how it sounds. We could have a new streaming microphone with this considering that it's popping every three seconds. That's fine. Then we have music. What does that even say? Okay. Yep.
good stuff. Okay, stop playing. Oh, there's an equalizer. That looks jank. And I love the wallpaper windows. Hopefully everything's on this micro SD card so you can have all these files. How does one stop it playing though? Okay, I've worked that out. Good. All right. What's the fir Firefox? Oh, it's pictures. Okay, Street Fighter, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, this windows. Uh, <laughs> that looks cool. Even, look, okay. So you could just display this on your desk with that displayed and be like, yeah, retro computing. But the thing is, can we actually connect a computer display up to this? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, there's Windows 95 there, looking good. Oh, there's Windows 7. Oh, that, that, looks, that looks healthy. Ah, can I actually do anything with the photos or? No, I, I can't do anything. It's just literally a, a showcase of the photos. Ah, uh, there's the Windows XP background. Man, that brings back memories. Ah, uh, something. Ooh, something. Beach. Famicom, the thing that started it all. Gundam? Gundam, yeah. Uh, boat, uh, star system, solar system, constellation, that's it. Uh, then you got houses and stuff, Wild West, Rocky Mountains, some anime thing, Windows 7 Starter Edition. Oh my god, I remember Starter Edition. That thing was absolutely horrendous, but it worked. Um, oh, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, the, what car is that? I was going to say an Aston Martin, but I don't think it's an Aston Martin. It's some sort of a weirdo thing. Uh, then you've got walking across water that's a wallpaper from i was gonna say xp but i don't think that's from xp that's from something else then we have underwater deep sea diver is that from windows 7 or windows 10 or windows 8 oh there's windows 7 with 7 written there another gundam thing and that's all of the photos by default so we'll have to put some on what does the compass thing do oh the compass is uh okay uh, uh oh no uh oh did I just delete it? What did I do? Is there a way to possibly change the language? Oh no, I've just changed the wallpaper. Okay, let's change the wallpaper to the janky Windows 7 one. Let's change it to that. There we go. Okay, I've, I've worked out things. I thought I was deleting stuff. What's this do? Do this option. Oh, that seems to be a base boost or something. That mutes it. This is the date. And I'd say that would be factory reset perhaps. I'm not too sure, but that's literally all the functions that you have with this by default out of the box. So now's the time where I'm going to load this up with my own things and test this out further and see what we can possibly do with this. So I've got the micro SD card in my computer currently. So the folder structure on this has game list, which is just all of the games that are on this. Nothing too complicated here, but at least it tells me exactly what's on this. Then we have instructions, which we've got the video converter, which looks a little something like this. You would browse for a folder and it would come up with the output folder, choose your video, and then you can convert it to AVI format for it to work on the actual system. There's also this folder called Format Factory Setup, and there's a couple of JPEGs which show this. I'm not too sure what this exactly does. It could be some sort of a converter by the looks of the AVI thing there, but I'm not too sure. I'm not going to open it up. Then you've also got instructions and a bunch of pictures showing exactly what this thing is supposed to look like all hooked up and stuff, but we've already worked that out. MP3 has our MP3 files, which I've got BFG Division on here at the highest bit rate. Music is nothing. NES ROM is all of the NES ROMs. I've put a couple on here. I've put an Atari 2600 ROM. I've put a Game Boy ROM on here somewhere and a couple of bootleg NES games as well, just to see if I can actually play them on this. In photo, we've got all of the photos that I've already demonstrated. However, I've put one on here, which is a 3840 by 2160 image, so 4K, and that's the Doom image. So I want to see what that looks like on the screen on this. Sticker has nothing in it. Story has nothing in it. User has what my current wallpaper is. And then we have video, which is all of the videos here, but I have put Costa Rica in 4K 60 FPS at 720 by 480 at 20 frames per second. So that's going to look absolutely wonderful but I just want to show you the contents of the micro SD card so it's fairly basic but if you do boot this thing up without the micro SD card in it does a little something like this and that's the screen you get which I believe is the no signal thing so you need that micro SD card in order to use this now that the speaker actually works on this thing I can show you what happens when you boot this up we know that the Windows XP screen comes up but I'll just show you what happens when we do it again and the little LED on the front there is lit up too and there you go, we've booted up. And one thing I didn't know is that if you press and hold minus on the front of the unit, 
gives you that authentic experience, you know? Very nostalgic. Don't mind all the crap on my desk, and sorry for this janky footage, but I'm using my phone to record this bit because I just thought it'd be a little bit easier. But I've put videos and music on this, so I'm just gonna demonstrate to you what it all looks like. The speaker and all that sort of stuff's over there, but that's okay. So if I go to videos, I've put Costa Rica in 4K on here. This is what it looks like. I'll put the volume up too. Oh. Okay, that's as loud as it's gonna be. Um, it looks as good as you'd think, to be honest. It's pretty low quality. It's not in 4K. But the next video pretty much sums up this entire unit by itself. So, here you go. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Right. Bless Ashens for finding that clip. And, uh, yeah, that's video playback on this. Now, as for games, unfortunately, the Atari 2600 ROM didn't pop up, but the two NES games did, so I've got Grandad 7 on here, which, um... Sounds good. This is how this plays. Somehow. Perfect. This is, uh, this is good. Full of bootleg games, so what more can you ask for at this point in time? I did find Mario 16 in my folder of random NES games, so Mario 16 is flickering. That's not good. Oh, no, it's fine. See? Uh, we know what's going on. Do we? No? Oh, okay, I just, uh, sure? Yes? Good. Okie dokie. Uh, uh, what are you doing, mate? I've put the wrong bootleg on. Well, this exists. Now, the microphone function, I've plugged it into my PC, it recognizes it, but unfortunately I can't record any audio with this. So, the best I can do is do this, and, uh, you can hear me speak into it. This is the karaoke function, which is about as useful as you'd think it would be. Music, on the other hand, I'm curious to see how loud this speaker can get. Uh, what just happened? Is it okay? Oh, I've put the equalizer on. So let's move this out the way. Get our sound meter and play BFG Division. That's not BFG Division. Safe to say this is not a big spurker, it just works. It's fairly low quality, um, but I've got to still work out that this was a, what, $125 unit? It's sounding a little bit like that. Next up I've got photos, so I can display that Doom wallpaper. That's what it looks like on this. Just to give you a bit of clarity, you can count the pixels if you wanted to. It gets good. It will do. Look, it's not meant to be anything high quality. You can display photos on it and that's really it. And then we're back to settings and that's that's all. That's everything. Pretty, I've pretty much demonstrated everything that this can do by itself. But the one thing that I haven't demonstrated to you all is using this as an actual screen. So I'm going to hook up a pretty ancient console that some of you may or may not have heard of. And we're going to play a game of Doom on the Atari Jaguar. I'll be back in a moment. So in order to get AV working on this, we're gonna need this little dongle that I showed at the start of the video. I switch it off, like that. Then I get the cable that connects the monitor to the bottom of it and take that out. Now I connect this up to it. I get the AV cables from my Jaguar and I connect yellow and red or white, doesn't matter. It'll output it anyways. And this is Doom on the Atari Jaguar. Or Jaguar, doesn't really matter, does it? It boots. But it doesn't play. Shit. I realize why it's not working. It's because this can't display NTSC. My Jaguar unit is actually an NTSC one, not PAL. So this needs a PAL signal in order for it to work. The thing is though, I don't even know how to switch that to PAL because I don't think you can switch it to PAL. But at least I know Doom works. See? Atari Jaguar Doom. 
Yay! I actually got the cartridge off uh, AliExpress, it's a bootleg. Um, I also am controlling this with one hand, so it's not that fun. But you're not really here to see uh, Atari Jaguar Doom on an actual screen, you're here to see it on that. So I'm gonna have to try and figure out what I can do to make it display on that. Plan B. Since my Atari Jaguar didn't work because that's NTSC and this thing's only PAL and I've looked at the settings of this thing and I have no way to change it, I've decided to hook up my PS2 to this. And here we go. Perfect. So I'll show you PlayStation 2 gameplay. Of course I'm going to be showing you San Andreas to just give you an idea of how this looks on this screen. So straight away, it does look a little bit washed out. There is a lot of grain happening, but as a cool desk ornament to hook your PlayStation 2 up to, you can absolutely do that. Oh man, memories of this. Wow. So like to give you an idea of the quality too, see how the text is pretty, uh, well, let's just focus in like this and I'll show you San Andreas. <laughs> Now I've also tried to think about how I could connect a PC up to this and apart from trying to connect it up via component cables, which I don't have anything that could possibly work, I don't have any other options. So I'm kind of just stuck with this, but this is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on this thing. Now I'll do the brightness up to 75 because 100 is a little bit too bright. That's too dark. So we'll do 75 right about there. So this is how I'd usually play it on a welcome device. So I was waiting for the buttons to come up then. All right, not looking through the phone to look at where I'm going. It's, it's playable. It doesn't look the best. Uh, I was meant to jump there. It's L1 to jump on PS2, that's right. Let's see if I can make this jump. Oh, oh that happened. As a novelty, it's cool. But I'm really trying to work out the cost of this is just not worth it for what you are getting. With that Android calculator that's sold by the same people, you got a lot more functionality and all that sort of stuff. With this, it's just a glorified Famiclone that you can connect a PS2 or, you know, any AV device up to, well, if it's PAL, and you can go ahead and play it on this if you wanted to. But it just looks a little something like this. You're better off trying to find a, a second-hand CRT TV or a cheap LCD monitor instead of spending $120-odd on this tiny little thing. However, for the pure novelty of it, you can absolutely get this and, you know, as I said, have it as a little desk ornament to be like, look at me, I've got this cool-ass little retro PC-styled thing that I can play San Andreas on and it's just, it's cool, okay? There's a thing with San Andreas and GTA Vice City as well, is I remember the Hot Ring Racer cheat off by heart, so let's see if I can spawn a Hot Ring Racer right in front of me in 3, 2, 1, let's go. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, at this point in time, it's just a pretty expensive novelty. Can't play any other games built onto this, but at least you do have this AV hookup, and I can't actually change the screen to be centered. It's just stuck like that, so I've got these black bars happening. Not much I can do on this 3.5 inch display. One more game that I do want to show you all. Final Doom on PS1. Had to play Doom on it somehow. I mean, it is cheating using a PlayStation 1, but I don't really have any other choice. I really wanted it to work on the Jaguar. It would have been cool, but NTSC, man. Which is strange, because I thought China was NTSC. Am I mixing things up? I don't know. But let's get a better look at PlayStation 1 on this, just to see if it might be worth it for PlayStation 1, given that, you know, it's lesser quality and not as sophisticated as PS2. Well, there it is. Well, there's no E1M1, but, uh... It looks good. So honestly, probably for retro gaming, uh, I mean, PS2 even, but for retro gaming, yeah, this would be a pretty cool little novelty. I died very quickly. Um, maybe I've got it on very difficult mode. Going up for a bit of a close up. Yeah, it looks, it looks reasonable. Very limited functionality. At the end of the day, I thought we could do some pretty cool mad hacks with this. And apart from connecting a console up to this, I can't use this on my PC. I can connect it up to my PC, but I can only view the memory card contents. That's it. I can't actually output my screen to this. I can't use the microphone as an actual microphone. Not that I'd want to anyways, but 
you know, that option would be cool to have. The control is pretty mushy. But for Famicom games or NES games, it is perfectly fine. The mouse is, well, just a volume control thing. The speaker isn't very loud, but it will do. And the build of this thing is fairly cool with the whole retro style going to it. So that's one thing I do really like, but the screen is just pretty low quality for what it is. I mean, can't really do much with a 3.5 inch display, but it just would have been nifty if they actually chucked a small CRT on this. I would have been amazed with that, but yeah, it is what it is at the end of the day. Uh, you folks wanted to see this demonstrated on the channel. Here it is. At least you've got to see Doom on it. And I think with that very long conclusion of this and trying to think of any other functions that I could do with this, I think it's time I should tear it down. Also, another thing that I just wanted to point out too is I'm actually powering this with my Shargeek power bank. Currently, it's outputting 5 volts at 0.35 amps, so 1.8 watts it's fluctuating to. So it said not to use high-powered charges on this, but I can use my power bank and get away with it. So going back to that janky calculator, did I actually destroy it by using a high-powered charger, or did I not destroy it because it's just a janky thing? Who knows? Let's go ahead and tear this down and conclude this video, I think. I guess it's time that we take this thing apart. So I think what we'll do is start off with the accessories. Let's start with the controller first. And here is controller with the whole Nintendo branding on it there. No copyright infringement whatsoever. I don't expect too much to be in here because it's just going to be a PCB and some buttons and that's about it. Well, it could be something hidden in here. I don't know. That's it. Nothing too spectacular here. It's just... A board with some buttons on it, looking a little something like this. It's called the HD 909 just there. I gotta flip it. There you go, HD 909. But this is the flimsiest PCB ever. Wow, there's not a lot to that. Well, it doesn't really need to be, honestly. But yeah, okay, so that's the controller. Next up, big spurker. The bottom of it is where the counterweight gets placed into it, supposedly. Oh, okay. That just goes in there like that, and you would put a counterweight in there and the stand just is held on by one screw is it not no it's not okay there we go and that's the stand there so i'll just put that with the rest now we're gonna have to pierce through all the warranty stickers but that's okay we need to investigate and big spurt Um, well, uh, yeah, okay, that's sand. On the bright side, if they wanted to smuggle something in this, they absolutely could, <laughs> could have. I was not expecting that. I thought they meant in the, the, uh, oh, okay, okay. But the big spurker is just there like so. Um, and I guess I just put that back in there like and we just pretend we didn't see anything. Did we see anything, folks? I don't think we did. We didn't see anything in there, no? Okie dokie. Microphone's up next. Let's have a look at this. Will there be another bag of sand in this? Probably not, because it's fairly weightless. Unless they've put, like, a couple of Tic Tacs inside of here or something. Perhaps they have. I don't know. Let's find out. We're on this journey together. Yep, there he is. <laughs> The one right there it's the perfect fit for it too i'll just once again put that back in there and pretend i didn't see anything don't know why the microphone doesn't work on a pc i've tried it on a couple of different pcs actually and it just doesn't work it detects it it says yeah you've plugged something in that could be just you know normal audio sensing that a jack's plugged in i go to audacity and nope nothing i don't know how the microphone bit comes off mouse one screw holding it together i mean it works but is there anything in here? Nope, just two clicky buttons and that's it. That's all it is in there. Nothing to see here, moving on. Time to take apart the unit itself. Let's take off the bottom piece first so we can get a good look inside of this and then just work our way through it, I suppose. Oh my God, really? Okay, sure. I'll agree with that. This is the first time that um, I can safely say that there's concealments. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. 
that they've actually done that. Because I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't stand up by its. I mean, it's still heavy, kind of, not really. Oxygen absorber. Do not eat. Part of me wants to slice one open, but I don't want to do that. It's definitely some sort of sand in there, but oh, there's no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's two of them! Wow! This is incredibly janky. I just... I laughed my silly head off when I opened up that 8 terabyte hard drive thing and discovered that there was the four USBs in it. This is almost as bad... <laughs> as bad as it... It's... Uh, yeah! Yep! We do have a chip on there, which looks a little something. This is very uh, messy, by the way. Looks a little something like that, which I'm not entirely sure what that is. But there is a spot for a battery just there. Obviously, no battery in this one because uh, they could have fit one, actually. You could still put one on here for potential modification if you wanted to. Don't know how battery management would be, but a little flex ribbon for the micro SD card. The buttons are just on there like so. But this is just very, uh, very messy. I'm really thinking this won't work after I'm done with it because it's going to be something that I've accidentally disconnected or I've done something with because I just don't have much faith in this. How many bags have we found in this so far? Four? Three? No. Or, as I said, concealment for, for things in the mail. I'm surprised that it didn't get caught up by customs. They would have scanned this and they would have seen that there would have been several bags in this that have some sort of foreign material in it. And customs has just went, meh, that's fine. That's not a problem. Meanwhile, I send two batteries over to my friends in Romania and Slovakia, and the post office goes, oh, that's illegal. That could be damaging and destroy the world and oh no and stuff, but this could potentially have, yep, no, just agree with that. Just agree with it. All right, so now we're at the screen. Let's see what this looks like. I don't know if I should have put everything back together on the base, but uh, we'll soon find out if that was a mistake or not. But this should be the brains of the operation, perhaps, like a CP you or something like that should be in here but that's not saying if there's another sandbag in here which probably is but let's see let's take it all apart and bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. Uh, well let's pretend I, <laughs> let's pretend I didn't see anything um, oh my god what oh uh, uh Okay, so we have a controller. Well, we have the LCD, number one, which the LCD is just there. But then we have a board with that chip on it, just there. Not sure what that is, but that is likely our way to display stuff into this, perhaps, because, yes. Does that make... No, no that doesn't make sense. They just styrofoam. <laughs> It's just styrofoam right there. It's just, ah, oh, it's fine. No, no one cares. It's fine. Dear Christ, this is extremely janky. And then that just, yep, okay. And then you, then you have that random piece in there. <laughs> what? What's behind door number one? What is this? Oh, okay, so there's another board that has the two connectors on there. Once again, you could probably modify this to do a lot more than what I've been able to do with it, but uh, I wouldn't know the first thing about modifying this, to be honest. Feel free to let me know what modifications can be done to this. Okay. Now we connect everything back up again. The question is, does it still live on? Yes, it does. Does it power on? I didn't kill it. Did I kill the controller? Nope. Did I kill the volume button? Nope. Did I break the microphone? That still works. Good stuff. Reporting from the desk of s'mores. This, uh, oh, okay, all right. It still works, even though it has a big piece of styrofoam in it and two sandbags, um, it, it, it's, it still works.
I display a specs list of this thing, but I honestly don't know what is inside of this. Something that controls TV out and something that would control the bottom piece and all of the accessories and stuff that's connected to it, as far as I know. But that is this thing, whatever you would like to call this. I'm going to call this probably the most expensive Famiclone that I've ever come across, because realistically, that's what this is, is just a glorified Famiclone that has AV input and you can play music and videos and have microphone and speaker. Otherwise, that's that's really it, to be honest. But you folks were all very curious to see what this thing can do. And I think I've demonstrated absolutely everything. Oh, it's not back together properly. That's fine. We'll just pretend that that doesn't matter. That's all good. It's together for the most part, all right? That's it with this I wish item. And the first video that I'm making from returning from my break. I hope you've all thoroughly enjoyed this one. I'm still kind of baffled and lost for words of what I just witnessed inside of the unit. But um, if you've made it this far without using timestamps, thank you so much for sticking around and watching. I really do appreciate it. But if you had to skip past things and stuff, I uh, don't blame you because <laughs> I, I had no structure going into this whatsoever. As I said, I'm still baffled and questioning what I just looked at. You can sum it up in a few words if you would like, but this product was picked by you folks on one of the last live streams I did. So a big thank you to all of the folks displayed on screen. And since there's only a select few of you, I can say you all by name. So of course we have to mention our heroes, Ruffle Daniel and Brian Martins, which are the two absolute mad lads that mostly fund seeing these weirdo products on the channel. So make sure you give a special thank you to Ruffle Daniel and Brian Martins, but thank you to Ibrahim Dude, Milan Fabry, Cash, Helmy87, Kenny S, Benzo. Oh, and also Troy Van here. He's an awesome person and loves supporting the channel, so I give him a big thank you too. Blue Light, Harmony and Ultraviolet, Z We Lee or She Wiley, sorry, hope I said that correctly. Ryuji CM, Official Furious Gamer, YT, Beavers in Space, Oggy Osborne, Cheese the Sylveon, Sherm, and HVF. So thank you very much to all of those folks for donating your hard earned money towards seeing various technology that's quite questionable in quality. I really, really do appreciate it. And with that, that is another installment in the Irish series. If you want to have a look at this, I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to take a look at it and see what the thing is all about. And the system files from this, well, not the system files, but the files that were on the micro SD card are going to be uploaded to the internet archive. And I'm pretty sure there's a gray area with copyright there, but I'm not too sure. It's just a backup of what was on this micro SD card, just in case someone gets it and loses the data on there or something. I don't know. Thank you very much to everyone who has tuned in. I really do appreciate it. And I'm back to making content and stuff. Even though I'm still a little bit sick, I'll soldier on and I have plenty of things to do. I've got something really special that I do want to show you, but I do have those servo phones from that live stream as well that I need to review. I want to do a live stream just to let you all know what did happen over my break and all that sort of stuff, just to give you folks a bit of an update on what's going on. But I don't want to sort of spend too much time rambling in this video that I've already rambled enough anyways. So I'll catch you all in the next live stream probably in the next few days or so once this video goes up and yeah i'll chat with everyone and go from there all right everyone thanks again for watching i really do appreciate it and as always take care stay safe be good people and i'll see you all in the next video which should be probably one of the servo devices or this kind of cool mystery thing that i kind of found on my break and i really want to show you all but i'm sure i'll work it all out till the next time i see you all take care keep being awesome and i'll see you all very 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 soon If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.